Hey, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Went out and fished the other day. Didn't do real well. Got a little bit of fish in the boat, but nothing worth making a video about. So today what I'm gonna do, since probably 95% of my videos are gonna be on my kayak, I figured I would do a kayak walkthrough and how I have everything set up and what I use. So I will try to put everything in the description down below um, to links. So then everybody, if you're interested in anything that I have that I use, it'll take you to a direct link there. I'm gonna try not to use Amazon or anything like that, but straight to the manufacturer's website and then you can decide where you wanna buy it from there. But let's get started. All right, so getting started here at the front, you can see I have got the Motor Guide XI3 trolling motor. This is um, the one I bought comes standard with the um, GPS, so that way I have the options for spot lock, um, which I think is super handy. And if I ever decide to upgrade my fish finder, I can buy a fish finder that hooks directly into the trolling motor. That way your transducer is in the head of the trolling motor. And then if you program spots, if I ever get brave enough to take this thing offshore, I can mark where I want to go and it will automatically take me there. So maybe that'll be down the road. I'm not for sure on that. I'm pretty cheap and those fish finders, they're, they're pretty pricey, so I don't know if that will be an option that I'll ever go with, but if that's something for anybody that's looking to go offshore, is a great option. And sure, I think it's kind of probably pretty useless because most of us are going to always go fish the same exact spots over and over again, but it's a cool feature to have on it. Um, so as you come around the side of the kayak here, the way mine's set up right here is where I have my plug built in for my trolling motor. You can use any type of a plug that you want. Um, put my motor plugs in there and then the wires will run the whole way inside the kayak all the way to the back where I have my battery where I'll show you here in a little bit. But I just have two cords on it that way if I want to pull it up it makes it easy. I've got one on the right hand side. I just pull it down, this other cord pulls it right up, puts it right into the stove position. So that way, if I know that I'm getting into a real shallow spot, that I can just pull that thing up and I can start paddling at that point. Um, with the motor down in its regular position, I can go about a foot and a half in this. Um, they say with no motor or anything like that, that the new canoe will go to about three to five inches of water. Um, I haven't tried that. Usually if I get that shallow, I'm pulling it through there, wherever I'm at anyway. Um, but they also then, the cool thing with new canoes, they put these wiring plates in. We have three of them. We have one that's right here. And I don't use mine. Um, I use one in the back. But on my buddy's new canoe, we put his trolling motor. Um, holy crap, I had a massive brain fart. His wiring plug there. So that way it's a little more tucked up out of the way. Um, but those are handy. You've got two rod tip holders here to where if you want to lay your fishing poles down along the gunnels then you can use that to help keep everything tucked in. One thing I really like about the new canoe is their track systems, which I know pretty much all of them have it, but I want to say new canoe says they've got 28 feet of tracking on at least the unlimited. I don't know what the other ones are because I think there's about four other options. But this truly makes it unlimited because when you buy this thing, it comes with just the hull and a seat. That's it. There's no rod holders. There's no anything else. There are 
two rod holders here in the back um, that I will use whenever I'm you know going to my spot to fish or whenever I am there because I usually take three to four rods with me so those make it nice but there's no other rod holders there's no nothing like that so new canoe's thought is not one kayak fits everybody's needs so basically they give you the stripped down model and then you have any option that you would like to put onto this everything anymore with these kayaks they all come with the track mount systems so there's endless possibilities of what you can put on yours um, as you can see i don't have a whole lot on mine but this is my yak attack camera mount that i use obviously for mounting my camera which i use the insta 360 um, but i know with the insta 360 the gopros anything like that they've got the screw system up top to where you can use or you can take that off and just screw your camera directly to it so that makes it nice and then with this you can adjust it different ways that you would like it to be adjusted um, moving back now this is my phone holder this is by ram mounts and basically i just ram mounts makes a lot of different things from cars to motorcycles to kayaks to boats i mean they pretty much make everything they'll do camera mounts they do rod holders they do like this of the phone mount they do the uh, fish finder mounts so i really like what they do but basically you go in and you put in how you would like it whether you want it a fixed mount or the track mount and then put in what you're using it for your phone you know your uh, fish finder anything like that you pull up what model you have and then it shows you everything that you need for what you're going to use it for so that makes it nice but like i use this for my phone only it's got a little rubber holder on the back to make sure it's even tighter on that next is my rod holders that i use um these are by stealth and they make two different sizes on these. They got, I think they're called QR1s and QR2s. These are the twos. And basically the only difference in them is how big or small of a fishing rod it will hold. Now what I like about these compared to all the other ones, because if I'm doing set rig fishing when I'm on the kayak, I'm always throwing lures. But I'll throw out a Carolina rig or something like that. So I want something that's going to hold my rod and will not let it come out so whenever you snap that down in there with that pieces in place it is very tough to get that rod out of there it can happen but it is very difficult to do i know my biggest fish caught on one doing a carolina rig was a 33 inch redfish and that thing had my fishing pole bowed over and i was never worried about it coming out of the the rod holders and same deal this is all in the track system so if i ever want to move these there's two screws here i just unscrew them and either i can pick them up and move them wherever i want or i can just slide them up and down the track system so these things are awesome i love them i think they're probably a little bit pricey i know you can get into some of the cheaper ones for like 20 bucks or whatever i want to say well i don't even want to tell you because God only knows what prices of stuff are anymore. So, um, like I said at the beginning, I'll put the link in the description down below for all of this. You can price it out of what you want. You can shop around or anything. Um, also, they've got on each side, they've got these little storage compartments. Now, these are technically made for like your plano boxes and that type of stuff. I forget what size they say they hold. I think it's like a 3500. I don't use mine for that. I always have a milk crate in the back with my crates. So basically, I just use this as my catch all. I got sunscreen, I got bug spray, you know, I got shears for bleeding my fish out. I got a bunch of lures that I just throw in here. Um, the other side, I've got some fishing line in there if I need to retie a leader or going to hook up the Carolina rig, anything like that. So for me, they're my catch all but i know they are designed for the plain oak boxes that way they're nice and handy and then here you can see the two more electric panel plates um 
on mine on the other side. Mine is for my transducer because I have got my transducer mounted right here in the middle on this little piece of PVC. Like any transducer, they give you like 195 feet of line. So with these plates, you can pull them off. You cut holes in there and then this seals everything back up the way that you want so i just put all my transducer line inside the hull of my kayak and then i can just pull it out and hook it right up to my fish finder that's there so it makes it handy i think what i'm going to do is put some plugs on here and then that way i can plug in like my camera whenever i'm fishing i don't have to worry about switching out batteries i can plug in my phone so it's always charging that type of stuff so um these make it super nice you can they sell these also separate through new canoe so if i ever cut stuff in there and i don't like it i can just get a new one and they're pretty cheap is what they are so those make it awesome to have those like i said there's three of them on here one on the front one each side on the back um now the cool thing with new canoe also is their seat the seat's pretty much design like everybody else's but they have got their seat does a full 360 so you can spin this thing around you can fish any way you want out of it it folds down so whenever you're traveling you don't have to worry about it it's fully adjustable on how far back you would like it to recline on these straps here um, they got little holes on the side so you can tether everything to it i highly suggest tethering all your stuff whether you're Inshore fishing, offshore fishing, anything like that. But like on this side, I just got a rag that I keep here. And then I've got my paddle tethered to it. If you're not going to tether anything else, always tether your paddle. Because that thing will fall off. You go and hit a wave. I've had it many of times where a boat comes by. The wake comes up. It'll hit the front of the paddle and it pulls it off. That thing get away from you, even with a trolling motor an outboard motor, anything like that, you're going to want some way to get back in case those batteries die. So no matter what, always, always, always tether your paddle. That way you have it with you at all times. And then also by the seat, there's a cup holder on each side. Um, so that way you can keep your drinks or even same deal. I'll keep a drink in one. And a lot of times I throw my used lures or something like that down in there. Um, now here they've got it built into the hull for their basically like steering wheel, if you will. So on these, you can put on like they have a pedal drive system that you can do. They've got like the torpedoes that you can mount on the back and your steering will all be done with this. Um, just like on your Hobies or all that, where your little control knob for your directions down on the side, new canoe basically done the same thing. But if you're not using it, it's not in the way. You can unscrew it or anything like that. Um, so that makes it nice. Uh, depending on how you do yours, you've got the option. And then here in the back, I've got my battery. I've got, um, this is the Newport Vessels battery box. So it's got a 10 amp breaker and a 60 amp breaker already built into it. It's got USBs. It's got a cigarette lighter plug. And then in that, I have got, well, of course. I've got the LifePo 4 deep cycle smart battery, um, lithium. This thing, I bought it because it's cheap. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I'm a cheap dude, so I don't like spending a whole lot of money on a bunch of stuff. You get into some of these batteries, they're eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars. This right now on Amazon is like two hundred and thirty dollars. But the best feature of this is the Bluetooth. So there's an app you put on your phone and it will tell you everything you need to know about your battery. How much power you're using, if you're charging it, what stage you're at in your charging, how much power is going to it. Um, and it shows you how much battery life you have left. So like for me, whenever I go out fishing, you know, it's nothing to put five miles on a day. And so I want to make sure I have enough battery to get back. 
I initially had one of the cheap Walmart batteries and I was always wondering, will I make it back? Will I make it back? Will I make it back? Well, now with this, I can go out to my spot. So let's say I want to run two miles out to a spot I'm fishing. I can look at that app and it'll tell me, all right, I'm at 80%. So now I know I need 20% to get back. Do I suggest going that low? No, but it also gives you that gauge of knowing, hey, all right, well, I can't go much further or I need this to go back and you can keep track of that all day. So that makes it super awesome to be able to do. Um, another feature on the new canoe is here you have access to the inside of your hull. So whenever I was running my plugs, you run your water in and then you have access to pull everything through however you would like it to be pulled through. They make bags that you can put back here. So if you ever want to use this for like trash or anything like that, you can do that and it just fits down in there. Screw the lid right on it and you go. Um, rod holders as always. And on mine, I use like this whole back area here for my milk crate. Now, a lot of people use like the black packs and that type of stuff. I don't have one, so I can't really speak on them of how good they are or not. I, you know, we had milk crates laying around for whatever stupid reason. And so I just mounted a couple rod holders on there and I set it behind my seat. And then that way everything's behind me. I know where everything's at and I don't have to worry about it. It's there. It's convenient. I can just pick it up and go. Um, here is their handle, which is nice, it folds up, it folds down, um, but it's always there. It's very sturdy, it's made out of metal, so you don't have to worry about picking this thing up and if it breaks or anything like that. On, on some of these, I know they use those nylon handles or whatever. New Canoe does not have that, so that makes it super nice. Now on the back here is where you got a bunch of different options of what you want to do as far as like motors when I first bought this I had your very basic tiller handle trolling motor and so the way this works there's they've got a mounting plate that you put on the back here and then your trolling motor just sits on here now this will work with trolling motor like this which is the Newport Vessels 55 pound thrust and I had a tiller handle on it or an extender so I could get all the way up to where my seat was and I didn't have to really worry about it but with these new canoes they've got the torpedoes they've got the um, Newport makes one you can do up to a two and a half horsepower gasoline motor on here um, like the boat says, I mean, it's a new canoe unlimited and your options are pretty well unlimited on what you can add to this thing. The pedal drive system, everything runs back here. Your pedals stay up front and then back here is where your system goes to where a lot of them, they're mounted in, in the hull in the middle of the boat. So your turning radius isn't as good or anything like that, but their system mounts on the back. You can turn on the dime. Um, it's got the kick up option and everything the new canoe does, they make quick mounting brackets for it. So whether it's my trolling motor on the front, whether it's pedal drive, whether it's a torpedo, whatever, everything is a quick connect. You pull two pins. So back around the other end of the kayak here, here's your drain plug. Um, I mean, obviously that's pretty self-explanatory, but you're always going to get water in these things. I don't necessarily care what you do, but there will be water in the hull. You can pull that, tip it up, and then um, get everything drained out of there. I am sure you've seen these as I've been walking around. Before I bought my motor guide trolling motor, I would use this for throwing anchors. So, you know, a lot of people will put an anchor trolley on theirs. I'm not a big fan of drilling holes into the hull of mine or anything like that. So what I've done is I put one on basically each corner of the boat. And then that way, whenever I threw my anchor out, I just have a big D-ring hook on it. And I just lay it down on that and it held itself the whole time. 
So, depending on the way the current's moving, anything like that, if I needed to throw an anchor, put it on the spot that I wanted it to be on the kayak, that way I could face the direction I wanted to face and fish. Um, here on this side, you'll see a couple things I got cut, tethered. I got a little scissors for cutting braid, fishing line, anything like that. And then I also have myself a pair of pliers um, with the pins on them for doing any type of split rings or anything like that. Um, here's my transducer cable that I was talking about. As you see, it just pulls in and out of there whenever I'm not using it. I tuck it in there as much as I can to try to keep any rain or anything like that out of it. Obviously, I'm going to get some in there, but it helps keep it out as much as you can. Once again, another stealth rod holder. And then here is my fish finder. I just use the Garmin Striker 4. Like I said, I don't have one of the real big fancy ones or anything like that. But for me, when I'm fishing, I'm basically looking at water temperature and water depth. Um, it's pretty rare of like that I'm using this looking for fish. I'm usually in less than five feet of water about everywhere that I fish at, unless I'm going crappy fishing or something like that. So picking fish up in five feet of water will be pretty difficult unless you're using the side scan. Um, so I just went, my kids had got me this for Christmas a few years back. And so I like it just for the simplicity of it. It can mark spots, you know, it's got your, all your waypoint map and all that on it. Um, now it doesn't have the true like Coast Guard maps on it, um, but it'll track me and I can mark where I'm catching fish at and stuff like that. So if I ever want to go back, and look at it again I know where it's at um, they do got two more handles I missed it on that side that's where I keep my paddle at uh, but these are two plastic handles on each side so if you want to flip it over or if somebody's helping you carry this anything like that you've got handles and then that also doubles as your paddle carrier itself um, so as far as my kayak, I mean, I got, you see in some of my videos, I've got a Magellan fish bag cooler that I use that fits in the very front here. Um, I know there's different brands out there that make them to where it fits in, right in the front of the kayaks with the V hole. Shouldn't even say V, but where it's pointed in the front of it. Um, so I like that, you know, it'll hold an 18 pound bag of ice um and it does okay hold nice usually six hours something like that's about what you're going to get out of it water's going to stay cold in there most of the day but that's the cooler that i use um and honestly that's kind of about it i mean you're obviously going to want all your safety gear in my crate i've got one compartment strictly designed for it's got an air horn in it. It's got a U.S. Marine radio in it. Um, I always fish with the inflatable life jacket. So if you use one of them, I know at least here in North Carolina, you have to always be wearing that. If you use your old traditional style life jackets, you just have to have it on the boat. So anytime you see me, I bought one from Bass Pro Shops. They're, to me, they're very comfortable to wear. A lot of times I even forget them. I'll get off the kayak at the end of the day at the ramp and i go hop in my Jeep and it was like, oh crap, I left my life jacket on. Like I, I don't notice them to wear those big old style ones. I think those would probably be uncomfortable, but with them, you only have to have it on your boat. You don't have to be wearing it at all times to wear the inflatables you do. Um, if you're doing any type of offshore fishing, I would definitely make sure that you've got a flare system with you of some sort. And they also make basically like a tracking device that like the guys I watch on YouTube that do offshore fishing, they basically tether them to their life jackets. And if you fall in and get separated from your kayak or if you're in a group 
When you guys get separated, all you got to do is push that. It automatically sends out an SOS signal to the U.S. Coast Guard, and they can pinpoint track you where you're at. If you're doing any type of fishing like that, I 100% recommend it. You never want to get out there. First of all, you should never be going alone whenever you're doing that. And then number two, you want to have as much safety gear as what you can. We all know that lives and fish on the coast, this weather will change every 10 minutes. The weather might look good today and you go out there and you're two miles offshore in a kayak, which is crazy to me, but I know people do it. You want as much safety gear as what you possibly can in the event of any form of an emergency. You are way better to have it and never need it than need it and not have it. So please, whatever you do, make sure you have that. Um, as far as specs on this thing goes, this is the New Canoe Unlimited, which is 12 foot six long and it's 41 inches wide. So it, I believe it is the widest kayak on the market. Um, if it's not the widest, it's gotta be one of the top two. Um, haul weight on this is 84 pounds. You put the seat on it, you're looking at about 90 pounds. So it's not super heavy, but it also is not light. I use a trailer for mine. I don't have a pickup truck, so I don't bed load it. I don't try to car top it, anything like that. Pretty much on that, I'm fat and lazy, so I bought a trailer that I can pull this thing on and off at a boat ramp real quick, and I'm not getting in anybody's way and I'm not trying to lift this thing up. So um, that's up to you of how you would like to do it. But for me, trailer is by far the best way. I know weight capacity, it says max capacity on this is 600 pounds, or no, I'm sorry, it's 650 pounds. Self bailing weight on it is 400. So if you go above 400 pounds, you have to put scupper uh, plugs in all of your scupper holes. Now on this, it has got six of them. So you're never going to get water built up in this thing. As you can see down inside of here, I mean, their drainage system on this is phenomenal. I mean, it is, it is awesome of how much water this will move. I know before I've taken waves up over the bow, probably to close to where my plug is at. Um, and immediately, I mean, you fills up with water and within 10 15 seconds water is completely gone like their drainage system on this is awesome another feature i like is the matting that is on here um, it helps dampen everything and i personally do a lot of stand-up fishing in this so it helps kind of give you that extra little bit of padding for standing they also make kits to where you can finish putting the padding up here and also the whole way through the back um, but they make the kits for that um, anything else that I can think of I know price wise if you go to buy, go out and buy this currently um, you I believe you can buy them online I know I bought mine at great outdoors provisions here in Wilmington but right now these currently go just the hull and the seat is $17.99, which is pretty good. You start getting into some of these kayaks that are fully rigged out and all that, you're talking three, four, five, six thousand dollars for a kayak anymore. So New Canoe has kept their stuff fairly reasonable, and that way then you can make it what you want to make it. You're not paying five thousand dollars. For whatever brand name you want to put out there and then you still have to do stuff to it or it doesn't work for what you fully want the new canoe their motto is let's build them they're all built here in america they're actually built here in north carolina now they used to be on the west coast now they're in north carolina building these 100 percent made in the usa but they want theirs to be at a good price point and then you can make it whatever you want to make it so that makes it awesome you know, they've got, I think, five different brands out now. They've made an unlimited and a 10-foot. So it's called the U10, um, which is basically, from what I can tell online, the same exact setup as this. It's just two feet shorter. That's the only difference in it. Same width, everything like that. Um, so that makes it nice. But other than that, 
I think that's going to wrap it up. Probably went a little bit longer than what I thought this would. Hopefully you guys like this. If you ever have any questions on what I use, what I recommend, um, if you guys like this type of stuff, I mean, I can do reviews on fishing gear that I use or whatever. Let me know in comments down below, or if you have suggestions of stuff that maybe I need to look at if putting on this, let me know. So. Uh